It's June 3rd, 1985, and a woman named Catherine Yarbrough arrives at the Wellstar Kinstone Hospital in Marietta, Georgia for her 12th cancer treatment. Where a state-of-the-art linear accelerator would use high-energy radiation to kill cancer tissues and cells. She's been prescribed 200 rads, but this time, something went terribly wrong. Her chest was burned by an immense amount of radiation. But she was not the only one. Over the following years, this same medical machine would claim the lives of many and leave others with terrifying injuries. This is the true story of the million dollar killing machine, the Farrak 25, and the worst software malfunction in history. So how do you safely treat a highly invasive disease like cancer? For over a hundred years, radiotherapy has been commonly used as a way of treating cancer. The concept involves blasting cancer cells with radiation, which kills them, but passes invisibly through body tissue without hurting it or damaging it. Mostly. Linear accelerators use targeted beams of radiation to prevent and destroy cancer cells. In 1976, the Division of Atomic Energy of Canada LTD, otherwise known as AECL, developed a revolutionary new machine. A double base accelerator which uses electromagnets to shoot beams through a target twice instead of once. The Farrak 25 was one such machine. And unlike other linear accelerators at the time, the Farrak 25 was run principally on software and lines of code instead of just mechanical hardware. In 1983, AECL performed a safety analysis on the Ferric 25, but there was no interrogation or checks on the software that ran the machines. The code was actually written by a single person, a coding hobbyist. Anyway, the machine hit the market, and it was in extreme demand. On June 3rd, 1985, Catherine Yarbrough would become the first victim of what would later be known as one of the worst software accidents in history. Two weeks after Catherine's accident with the Ferret 25, there was a red mark on her chest, and directly opposite that, there was another one on her back. She was examined by a medical physicist at Kenstone, and the physicist estimated that she was hit by 20,000 rads instead of the prescribed 200 rads. 20,000 rads is nearly 20 times more radiation than Louis Slotin and Harry Danglin Jr. absorbed from the Demon Core. The doctor tried to recreate a beam of that strength with the machine, but was unable to. He contacted the AECL, but they told him to stop making these claims without any proof. They assured him that such an overdose was simply not possible. Over the next few weeks, the red circle on her chest and back became a hole, and the tissue in the area rotted away. Her left breast had to be removed and her arm was paralyzed. Seven weeks later, a 40-year-old woman with cancer arrived for her Ferric 25 treatment at Ontario's Cancer Foundation in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. She too was burned by the Ferric 25, complaining of electric shocks during the treatment. It was later estimated that her hip was radiated with 17,000 rats. This is more than you would receive standing inside the failed reactor of Fukushima. The ACL dispatched engineers to examine the Ferric 25 unit. They introduced a software modification, and the AECL later claims that the machine was now 9 million percent safer. A month later, in December of 1983, a third woman was burned by the Ferric 25 installed in Yakima, Washington. This is the exact machine that the AECL claimed was 9 million percent safer. Thankfully, she only suffered minor injuries, but still needed skin grafts to close the wounds caused by the intense radiation burns. Two months after this incident, the AECL declared that after careful consideration, they were of the opinion that this damage could not have been produced by the malfunction of the Ferric 25 or by an operator error. However, on March 21st, 1986, the Ferret claimed yet another victim a patient named Tyler Texas. During the treatment, the machine started buzzing in an unusual way. Then the patient was hit by a powerful pulse of radiation. As he began struggling and desperately trying to get off the operating table, he was hit by a second pulse of radiation. He felt a powerful shock, and because the intercom was broken that day, no one could hear him screaming and struggling. 
He did eventually manage to get up and he began banging on the door for help. He was examined by a physician and sent home and instructed to return if anything changed. A few weeks later, he returned to the hospital covered in blood. He was hospitalized and died of radiation sickness five months later, and the dose he received was estimated at about 25,000 rads. AECL kept telling the hospitals that an overdose just wasn't possible. But over the next nine months, Farak 25 would go on to kill two more cancer patients. But what is causing these fatal accidents? After each incident, the local hospital physicist would call AECL and the Medical Regulations Bureau in their country. But the AECL kept denying that the Ferric 25 was possible of delivering such radiation overdoses. The machine had so many safeguards in place that it frequently threw error codes and paused treatment, giving less than the prescribed amount of radiation. After the second incident, Prince Hager, a staff physicist at East Texas Medical Center, was determined to find out. In both cases, the Ferric 25 displayed a malfunction 54 message, something that was not mentioned in the manual, and so no one knew what this message meant. When it displayed the message, technicians would just skip and proceed with treatment and operation. The same radiotherapy technician had been involved in both incidents, so Fritz brought her back to the control room to attempt to recreate the problem. After working through the weekend, they succeeded in pinpointing the issue. The VT100 console used to enter the Ferric 25 prescriptions allowed for cursor movements via the cursor up and down keys. Now, if the user selected X-ray mode, the machine would begin setting up the machine for high-powered X-rays. This process took about eight seconds. If the user switched to electron mode, within these eight seconds, the turntable would not switch over to the correct position, leaving the turntable in an unknown state. This meant that the Ferric 25's computer could not determine if there is an underdose or overdose of radiation. So Fritz practiced and was able to reproduce malfunction 54 himself. So the Ferric 25 was placed under like severe scrutiny, and they found out that the Ferric 25s were programmed completely in assembly language. Not only the application, but the underlying executive, which took the place of an operating system. The computer was tasked with handling real-time control of the machine, both in its normal operation and safety systems. According to AECL, a single programmer had written the software based upon the Farrak 6 and 20 code. However, this programmer no longer worked for the company and could not be found. With this, on June 13th, 1986, the AECL sent the first corrective action plan to the FDA, part of which were changes in the Farrak software to tell the machine where the cursor was. Farrak 25s were back in use before the end of the year, but six weeks later, a Farrak unit killed again, bombarding a patient's chest with 10,000 rads of radiation instead of 87. It was discovered that the Ferrec had another invisible software problem. In 1988, AECL dissolved their medical division and lawsuits from families were settled in court. Finally, the Ferrec 25 was declared defective and its use was terminated. Something that is truly mind-blowing is that the Ferrec 25 managed to radiate patients more than a demon core irradiated Louis Slotin and Harry Danglin Jr. However, the demon core is definitely a lot more scary. You should check it out next in this video right here.